Today we continue our series on hearing God's call as we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 29 to 31 where St. Paul tells us the time is short and the world we're familiar with is passing away. We'll ask the questions, are you willing to follow Jesus and are you willing to give up everything to follow him? And peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text today, which was read in the New Testament lesson, was 1 Corinthians 7, 29 to 31. And we'll look at that as we go through our, our message a little bit today. The uh, colors on the altar have changed. I don't know if you noticed that. You maybe, maybe did. You see... As we go through the cycle of the church here, as most Christians do around the world, we have colors that form signs or signals along the way that something interesting is happening. It begins the church here, as you know, in Advent with the royal blue, warning us, alerting us, exciting us that the birth of Christ is at hand. And then on Christmas Eve, white, White is always used for God, purity and holiness, for the Christ child is born in Bethlehem. White goes all the way through the Christmas season. All 12 days are white for Jesus. But then you notice we're in Epiphany and we haven't changed the color, at least at first, because it's still about Jesus. Epiphany, the Epiphany Christ, and we as Epiphany Christians are simply celebrating the revelation of Jesus, first of all, to the Magi who came, the first Gentiles who came to worship the Son of God. And then Christ, as he shines forth or reveals himself to the world in all of the many ways he does, as he begins his messianic ministry, and today we're talking about the call of the disciples as we did last week. But why green? Why suddenly the change to green today? Because we are coming to the end of Epiphany already. There are three green Sundays at the end of the Epiphany, followed by the transfiguration of Jesus in white. And then on February the 18th, we suddenly make a change of color again to purple. Purple, the royal color. Purple that alerts us that we are in the Lenten season. A time like Advent of repentance and sorrow and reflection for what is about to take place as Jesus makes his way to the cross. These signs, these symbols are important for us because they mark certain things going on in the church. Jesus uses something very similar in Matthew when he talks about the signs of the times, you know. The earth is going into labor pains as the time gets near. He talks about wars and rumors of war and earthquakes and famines and all of these things greater and greater, closer and closer together as the end comes. And this morning, St. Paul reminds us the time is short. The time is short. And that's the thought for today. And the question that we're going to ask is, first of all, are you willing to follow Jesus? Not simply go to church on Sunday morning, which is important, which God calls us to do, but are you willing to follow Jesus? And then we're going to ask the question, are you willing to abandon everything, if called to do so? Those are hard questions for us. This morning, in the book of Jonah, which we read first, we have an unlikely prophet. If I were to say to you, which prophet in all the Old Testament had a bad attitude, you'd probably say, it's Jonah. If you ask, or I were to ask you, which prophet in the Old Testament had the most unwilling spirit, 
Answer would be Jonah. If I ask you, which prophet in the New Testament does Jesus equate himself with? The answer would still be Jonah. You remember those words in Matthew, don't you? As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of great fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah would not be someone you and I would probably choose as a prophet. God seems to pick the most unfit people to serve him, the most inept people to carry his gospel into the world. Jonah is called to full-time prophetic ministry and sent to Nineveh, of all places, the, king, the heart of the Assyrian Empire, the great enemy of northern Israel, People who were heartless, cruel, bloodthirsty, power hungry, you name it. Go to Nineveh. Jonah would have none of it. What did he do? You remember what happened. Instead of going north to Nineveh on the northern reaches of Iraq and Turkey, he went west to the, he, the seaport of Joppa, got aboard a ship, and sailed to Tarshish on the farthest end of the Mediterranean Sea. He was determined he would not bring the message of repentance to the enemies of Israel. Well, what happened? There was a great storm. And the ship was about to go under. They had thrown overboard all the loose cargo they could get rid of. And still the storm got stronger and stronger. And finally they threw lots to see who was the, what we call today, the Jonah, right? The unlucky one, the one that God was after. And sure enough, it was Jonah. Jonah was more than willing to admit to it. They asked him who he was, what he was running away from. He said, I'm a Hebrew. I serve the God of heaven and earth. I'm the one at fault. Throw me into the sea and your ship will be saved. But they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to sacrifice Jonah. But it came to a point there was no choice. And Jonah was thrown into the sea. I don't know if Jonah wanted to die instead of go to Nineveh. I don't know if he wanted to, he probably did want to save the crew. It sounds very likely in the text. In fact, Jonah was one who sacrificed himself for the benefit of others. And then God sent a great sea creature. We don't know what it was. It says big fish, says sea monster. We don't know exactly the translation, but it swallowed him whole. And for three days, he prayed in the belly of the fish. He prayed until God led that fish to the seashores of Mesopotamia and he was vomited out. And I'm sure God put witnesses there to view it. It had to be quite a sight to see this thing come up and this man spewed out of this fish's mouth. And you can imagine what he looked like and how he smelled. And I don't doubt he attracted quite a following on his way to Nineveh because God called him in the text a second time and said, Jonah, now go to Nineveh. And he did. The city was so great, the circumference around it, probably 60 miles, three days to walk it. Huge city, enormous. He entered the gates of Nineveh. Everyone was poised to hear the message of the prophet of God. And Jonah, unenthusiastic, a minimalist in his preaching, repent, for in 40 days Nineveh will be overthrown. He probably only had to say it once. Because immediately people began to put on sackcloth and ashes. The king decreed a fast and everybody prayed that perhaps God in his mercy would spare the city. And then what did Jonah do finally? He sat down on a hill to see the fireworks that never came and he got angry because God was forgiving. Ah, I hate that. What are you doing, Lord? 
These people deserve to die. But God delights in saving sinners who repent and turn to him. Not so different in the gospel lesson today, is it? Jesus on the seashore. We saw him calling uh, people last week. Today we see that he calls Simon and Andrew, James and John, as he walks along the Sea of Galilee. Fishermen, men probably who didn't have a desire necessarily to leave their business, leave their families, leave their homes, the familiarity and the pleasantness of life in northern Galilee. Men who were respectable businessmen. But Jesus said, follow me. Probably more unlikely candidates we would never find. Inept, boy oh boy, can you think of Peter and the things that he did? Rashly, brusquely charging into things, emotionally not thinking them through, cutting off the ear of the high priest servant, doing this and doing that, and yet such great men of faith, aren't they? Men who were like you and I, and like Jonah, sinners, called to follow Jesus full time. You and I have been called as well to follow him. You know, Paul tells us in Romans 8, verse 30, those whom he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. That call came to you through the word of God very likely as a baby in command of Christ to be baptized of water in the spirit for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And probably you were brought to a baptismal font, not unlike this one. And there the pastor put the water on your head and God in his mercy called you to be his child. Because he loves you. Are we perfect? No. We're all the same, aren't we? If we were to stand up to each other's criticism, not a one of us would fall. Or not a one of us would stand. We would, we would all fall. Because we're not perfect people. We're just as imperfect as Jonah. Just as imperfect as Andrew and Simon Peter and James and John and Martha and Mary and all the others that we read about in the scriptures. But God called you to be his own. He did that in love. And you are here today because his spirit working in your heart enabled you to answer that call. And you follow him. Following Jesus, of course, we know is a full-time thing. It's a lifestyle. It's not a Sunday morning activity. And you... As you live your life for Jesus, are called to be his representatives in the world. Now, when I was in, in the Navy, I had that, and as we have discussed, I, I guess I showed you the, the slideshow, uh, Washington, D.C., I worked for the Admiral, the Chief of Chaplains. When I got on the phone to talk to anybody of any rank anywhere in the United States Navy Marine Corps, what I said was the voice of the Admiral. They didn't hear me, Mark. They heard him. And what I said, they listened to and responded to, and things got done quickly. Not by my own authority, but by his. And so, you and I have the same privilege. When you tell people about Jesus, when you make decisions in your family for your your children, in your neighborhood, in your community, as a Christian living for Christ, when you share the gospel of God's love with each other and with others who need to hear, who haven't heard but desperately need to know about God's love for them as well, you are an imperfect person sharing a perfect word of love. And it's not you doing it, is it? Any more than it's me getting things done on a telephone it's the word, the authority, and the power of God. Paul says that this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Doesn't he say that? 
for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now this morning in talking to the Corinthians, which let's talk about the fact that people are not worthy. The Corinthian congregation was a congregation in conflict and yet God's power revealed in the hidden love of the Savior, in the Christ veiled in human flesh and hidden in the simple words of the gospel, come to them through the inspiration of St. Paul this morning when he writes to them saying, about relationships, what I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as they have none. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if they were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if it were, as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. So following Jesus is a lifestyle and it's the power of the word within us that transforms us into something new and different. It's the power of the word, the spirit of God active in that word in your heart as you're engaged in that word, as God draws you to it. Whether you're sitting at home doing your devotions in a morning or an evening, whether you're listening to a CD or a, a, a tape, well, they don't have tapes in cars anymore, but you know what I'm saying, of the Bible, right? Where you're sitting in church, Hearing the word proclaimed, singing the word in the liturgy, singing the word in the hymns and the songs, whether you're sitting in Bible class, the word is a living and active power transforming you, God says, into the likeness of his son. Because it's ultimately the father who calls. It's the father who uses the spirit to transform and who changes our attitude which sometimes, let's face it, is as bad as Jonah's, into something more willing and joyful. And he takes our hearts and he makes them his own. And this morning, Paul isn't saying, man, I know you're married, but go out and do what you want because don't live that way. You know, he's not saying, oh, you people who are sorrowing over your troubles, mourning over those you've lost, stop it. Not saying that. He's not saying, those of you who are happy, stop being happy. Stop it. I don't want you to be happy. Don't be joyful. And those of you who can afford to buy things, live it up. And those of you who can't, tough for you, you know. That's not Paul. What is Paul really saying here? He's saying, you love your wife and your husband. You love your children. But love God more. Love God more. Live for Christ as a disciple of Christ. When God is first in your life, all of those relationships will fall into a proper order and perspective. Don't worry about it. Don't cling to human emotion. Yeah, you're going to mourn. But remember, there is a hope and a joy and eternal love set aside and a place for you that Christ has prepared in heaven. You can be joyful in your morning. And those of you who are rejoicing, realize you can't always be happy in this life, but you know what? God is there and he will provide for you. You know what he's saying? He's saying, don't be engrossed in buying toys in this world. And if you are able to buy nice things, then do so responsibly. But when you do, Remember, they're not yours, they're the Lord's. And he's allowing you to have them, to share them with other people. And if you can't afford to buy all those nice things in the world, don't worry. There are still things God will provide. And you have the same opportunities to use the technology and the opportunities that God gives you to share the gospel for him. Because in the way we live, in the attitude we exude, in all of life, we are first, last, and always Christ's disciples. Christ's disciples. Dedicated students to the teacher, the master, 
The Word of God veiled in human form, Jesus. So whatever happens in this life, don't cling to this world. Enjoy the blessings God gives you here. Certainly. Love your family. Embrace your children. Be excited to do things. Go places. Whatever it is you do, there's nothing wrong with that. But do it from the perspective that all of these things are temporary. And they're not ours to keep. They all belong to God. So when your mom and dad brought you here to this baptismal font and the pastor put the water on your forehead and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mom and dad gave you away. They gave you to someone greater than themselves. They gave you to Jesus and you belong to him. And when you did that to your children, the same thing happened. We belong to Christ. And that puts a different perspective on everything we are and everything we do. And so whatever it is we do in this world, do it for the Lord. You go to work, you don't like your boss, you're working for the Lord, right? You don't want to do the things around the house that need to be done, but you're taking care of that house for the Lord. You're frustrated and you're angry with your parents or your children. They belong to the Lord. Treat them regardless as a child of God and love each other as God in Christ has loved you. So this morning, we change the color to alert you to the coming of the end of Epiphany. And Paul this morning tells us the time is short. This world in its present form is passing away. You don't have a lot of time left. Who can you share the love of Christ with? Who in your life really needs to know that God loves them? Take some time this week. Think of a name or two. And think of a way in generosity and kindness and love to tell them about it. They may be stinkers, let's face it. We all are. But they need to know just as much as we need to know that God loves us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.